All right. I've got top of the hour. I'd like to welcome everybody to our 25th installment of Virtual Thursday Training. Today's topic will be the payroll module. Um, this is the first Virtual Thursday we've done anything related to the payroll module. Um, we're going to talk about its setup, implementation, and some best practices. Um, without further ado, well, let's get started. That's me. I'm your lead trainer uh, with Emergency Reporting and I'll be your presenter today. Uh, my name is Tom Lewis and I see a lot of familiar names on our uh, attendee list today. But if you're new to joining us, um, I'm a retired battalion chief out of Arizona, currently a paramedic. And uh, I've been an ER customer since 2004 and a trainer since the end of 2011. So I've been using the system a long time and seen it grow dramatically um, over these past 10 years. I always like to mention, um, those of you who have been with us um, over the weeks, I always talk about our uh, training opportunities that uh, we offer um, with emergency reporting. We have regional training conferences. Those are three-day conferences. I'll talk a little bit more about those on the next slide. We also offer on-site training specific to your department um, where we come to you, uh, spend time with your uh, members of your agency and really focus our training on, on the specific needs of your organization. Uh, those are often very, very successful. They're, and at times they can become informal too, or we're just doing one-on-ones with key personnel. For example, uh, there was a time back east, I went with the, the prevention department. There were two or three guys that just wanted to get down and dirty with the, uh, with the occupancy module. And we spent um, quite a few hours just getting them very proficient with that. So we structure it exclusively to your needs. And then, of course, we have online training, um, very similar to our virtual Thursday training. However, um, a minimum of three hours is required. And again, that's driven by your needs. Uh, we can go through any topic within the system that you'd like, or we can have a more structured format for brand new customers. It's um, A lot of this is driven by our customers' needs. So we always like to say we don't put out canned presentations, and that's very true. We have some structured presentations, but a lot of times, especially on our regional training conferences on the day two, we... Uh, we let it be driven by the students' needs. So you walk away with the tools that you need to, to get your job done and done efficiently within our system. That's the emergency reporting experience. That's our three-day uh, regional training conference. Day one is the essentials. That's the day I was telling you about that's very structured. Um, it, it goes over, it basically gives you a lap around the modules and then an in-depth discussion and how to on both the incidents and the training modules since those are very commonly used modules um, across the board with all of our customers. Then on day two is the integration day. And that day focuses on really it's on all of your needs. We do user stories and, uh, and you tell us what you want to go over in the system. And, and chances are, if you have a question, someone else has that same question and, and everyone in the room benefits. And it's a fast paced uh, day. It goes by, we're there for eight hours and we break for lunch. And before you know it, um, we've, we've covered a tremendous amount of information. So really exciting and, and fun day. Then our last day is the leader, the lead ER, and that day, the morning, is driven um, by administrator needs. So we go over the administration module in depth, um, item by item, basically. We also go over our reports module. And then the afternoon is all about um, an introduction to software development, and it gives you your, a voice to participate in our development process. We discuss, everybody proposes ideas for the system to improve it, change it. Um, we take those stories, we discuss them, we debate them, and then we vote on the best one for each of our various product owners. And those kind of it kind of gives a little bit cuts in the line with our normal development process and gives gives the product owners, what we call product owners of the various modules in our system, a heads up that, hey, we've got customers that are really looking at this and uh, these are different ideas, be it a report or a new feature function. And that's what we spend the afternoon doing. And um, the one we did in South Bay last month was a very productive, had a lot of active participation and, and they came away with a realization of how challenging creating software, a good software product is. So all in all, those three days are, are really a highly productive and interesting day. And you'll walk away really in good shape to almost train, to really train a lot of members of your department on how to use our system. Next one's coming up. We've got ones in Golden, Colorado, in Yakima County, Washington, Orange Beach, Alabama, and Morris County, New Jersey. Um, that's just for the first half. Looks like we've got some on the books for the second half. Uh, that will be in, um, again, another one in Northern Alabama. And then we're looking at California, uh, Utah, and Ohio. 
Yes, and Casey's mentioning and lunch is indeed included every single day, and that keep, that allows us to build relationships with everybody and to just answer questions. You know, the trainers are there. We we stick around and have lunch, and you come over and we can talk about different you know ideas and needs for your individual organization during that lunch break. So it's really really great opportunity to network with uh, fellow firefighters and uh, people using our system. We uh, go ahead and, and uh, launch a poll real quick here. Go back a slide, and of course we have 10 new or upgraded customers since we last met uh, last week. Let me go ahead and launch. I've got two polls today, two quick ones, and this one I know you've seen before, but we always like to get a feel for who, especially those of you that are new to our virtual Thursdays, if you'd be interested in any of these uh, these opportunities that we afford you. And again, Casey, our training coordinator, will give you a call or an email and just to reach out to you to see um, how we can make that happen for your organization. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, go ahead and select you can select one of, one or more of the following. I think I set it up to where you can pick more than one. But if you're interested in any of these uh, opportunities that we afford you for training, either hosting a regional training conference. And if you host a conference, uh, you get 10% off of uh, you get 10 off of the fees for all of the members of your department. Um, then, of course, if you just want to send one or two to one nearby. Um, that ones we've got listed up on the board there. You can attend one. Um, on-site training is where we come to you and it's exclusive to your department. And then, of course, virtual virtual training, a minimum of three hours on that. So we'll give it a few more moments if you wouldn't mind uh, just placing your vote there. I appreciate uh, you doing that. And we'll close it in 10 seconds. And a few more. Last chance, everybody, if you just go ahead and click on one of those items and we'll go ahead and close it out. All right. And here's our results. So got a lot of interest in attending and also on uh, virtual training. So outstanding. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate that. And chances are, Casey, will be in touch with you. And as I've mentioned before, we will not send, send you countless emails. We will not be making tons of phone calls. It's just our ability to reach out to those, those of you that are genuinely interested and in, in explain more of the details and opportunities there. All right, ten or new up, ten or ten new or upgraded customers since we last met. Uh, so uh, we're on track at least ten, ten to twenty um, each week. Um, brand new customers. If you are one of those new customers joining us today, welcome to the emergency reporting family. We are glad to have you. These uh, weekly training sessions are of no charge, and we'd love to have you participate. And you can also view archives of these on our user voice feed, uh, user voice site. Couple new features I want to mention before we roll into the into the uh, curriculum today. Uh, brand new in our in the my profile um, uh, module, we now have the ability to view your certifications. And right now, I know many of you may have the question: Well, can the in, can the person who's logged in change anything? Can they update their information? Right now, they cannot. It is all um, can be only be done by an administrator. But this is one way the people in your organization can check the accuracy of their information and then send an email to their supervisor to get things updated. So um, up to now, we did not have the ability to view your certifications, but now you can. And by having that ability to view them, you also have that ability to pull if there's been any scanned certificates in there. They have a repository to basically print them out as needed when they're going for promotion, um, if they're applying for to uh, community college, uh, taking any other kind of tests or credentialing. Um, they'll have it available to them without having to look through a filing cabinet at home or try and find a, where they kept all their certificates. So brand new feature uh, in our system and there's more to come. This is a, this is a actively uh, being, de this, this particular module is actively being developed right now. Another new feature I wanna show you, and uh, we'll jump into this if we have time today, but in, you may have noticed those of you responsible for any fleet or station management that our pending maintenance page looks a little different. It is now resembling the rest of our tables within our system if you've been to the maintenance or to the hydrant occupancy or training modules so now you can actually sort by the different fields listed here and i just took a quick quick screen grab but you can type in part of the id of the piece of equipment to see if it's pending maintenance um, the vehicle id number um, what type if it's an inspect a replace a repair you can even type in part of the subject line. So it, it allows those of you that are responsible for um, managing or tracking fleet and equipment maintenance a much faster way to drill down and see what, what the pending maintenance is for particular types of apparatus um, or types of equipment. And 
just makes that that whole uh, part of the maintenance module much much easier for for the user. So, and there's going to be more to come with this, including uh, the ability to track station maintenance as well. So, look for that in the near future. All right, where to find the latest info? Always at the top are system notifications. That's probably how you found out how to join us today for Virtual Thursday. Those last for two weeks, and then they're removed from the system, or of course you can manually remove them by clicking the X here. If you accidentally lose it or someone says, hey, go register for this training and, and it's no longer up there, all you have to do is click on our support button and it will take you to the list of updates and news and you'll be able to see the last six months worth of system notification postings. And typically it's, it's announcements with, the, with training and it's also updates, um, a description of the updates ongoing with our system. And as always, we've got the user voice page. I always recommend to everybody that uh, at work, make your home page. Now that there's tabs in our browsers, you want two tabs up. You want the emergency reporting login as one of your home pages, and then you want this emergency or feedback.emergencyreporting.com because the user voice is where you can seek information about our system, including um, Virtual Thursday archives, as well as knowledge base articles and it's also where you can suggest new features and I was just on the phone today with one of our customers and he put in a great feature to have a new uh, permissions uh, selection for our training module one that gives company officers a little more leeway of being able to add personnel to it but not the ability to review a class and leaving that to the chief so it kind of adds a layer to permissions. so if you see an item that you want that you think you'd like to add do a quick search first to make sure it hasn't been already suggested. And if it has, vote, give that person your support by voting for it. Or if it hasn't, then you're going to be the first one to su suggest this idea and talk to everybody you know that uses emergency reporting and get them to vote for your idea. Send them a little screenshot of, of your idea. Say, hey, vote for my idea because the more votes it gets, the more it gets on it, the, the faster target it is on the radar of our development team. And remember, as always, that vo uh, user voice is your voice to our system. All right, we're going to talk about the payroll module all day today. And we're going to go for the next hour about setting up payroll, hourly points and pay grades, how to, how to work with it within incidents, training events, and also general events. We're also going to um, show you um, I've created both an incident, a training event, and a general event, and how payroll is entered for each of those categories. And then if what you're doing with the organization doesn't really plug into any of those three events, I'm going to show you how to do time cards. And time cards apply to things that may not fit in for incidents or for training. And I created one of those in our the test account today, and I'll show you that. We're going to run some payroll reports and how to bulk update some payroll data, basically to change people's pay grades in one shot instead of having to do it one by one. So we'll get started. Um, again, thank you all for joining me out of your busy days. I know the, your shift work or if you're on a 40-hour schedule, there's always a lot to do. So for you to take an hour out of your week to join me, I really appreciate it. And I hope you find these, uh, these sessions valuable in, in helping you be more productive during your work week. All right. Let's jump right into it before we get going. Let me make sure. And I also want to mention I've got a lot of our team members here with us today. If you'll just indulge me, a quick thank you to everybody. I've got Casey, our training coordinator on board. Um, she's here to answer any questions logistically um, about um, our training events, both online and on site. Sarah, who is here to help answer questions, as she always does um, on the tech side of, of it. And I, and I know we've got some of our uh, sales reps across the country on board. I see Brian's here. From the Lakes region, Amber, who is our finance guru at the office, she's joined us. And who else? Oh, I'd like to say hi to Dean Prather out in uh, Millican. Dean, it's good, good to have you on board. Um, I've worked with Dean quite, uh, quite a ways back uh, a couple of years ago at his department. She's super sharp. Greg, welcome aboard. Greg Anderson, our Western sales rep. And I'm hoping not to miss anybody. Just give me a second. Mark Holloman, um, our Plains and Central sales rep. Hey, Mark. And let me give it just a few seconds. I think we got everybody. Yep, I think that's it. If I missed anybody from the ER team, just shoot a chat message and I'll be sure to mention you. But I want to thank the ER team for joining us today. We've got a lot of expertise here and there probably isn't a question we can't handle today. So without further ado, let's jump right into the payroll module. 
Okay, as always, and this is one of a, what we call kind of a legacy module. So it's going to look it's going to look a little different than some of our up newest updated modules, but it has a ton of functionality here. We and as always, we want to start in the settings of any module before you do anything in any of our any part of our system. You want to go to settings, so we'll do that in settings. And this is one of those nice setup uh, where it's really easy. What I've checked here is I've allowed the ability to enable hourly payroll and points. Now, payroll is going to allow a dollar value to be assigned to personnel for incidents, for training, for events, and then I'm also enabling time cards for things that don't fit into these three categories that I want to put some time, uh, time on. So we've got that on this side, and then over here are points. And those of you in volunteer departments, I know you know what this means, but what points allow you to do is that if you're not necessarily crediting your people with a dollar value or an amount per hour or time period work, but you want to assign points to the different events because that's how you award their contributions, especially as volunteers, contributions to your organization or to your community at the, um, at the end of the month, the quarter or year. So I've enabled them both just so I can show you what, uh, what they both look like in the different modules, but you don't have to select all these. You can simply choose the ones that are relevant to your organization. Um, but for uh, simplicity's sake, I went ahead and, and selected them all. Give me just a moment. I've got some questions here. I want to take a quick peek at. Hey, and uh, Robin, who's our new receptionist, receptionist at the office. She started with emergency reporting on Monday. So Robin, welcome to the, welcome to the ER family. And I'm glad you're with us today. Uh, we'll talk about, uh, Jim's got a question, and, and Sarah, don't let me uh, go away without answering it for him once we get deeper into it. He wants to know if we can track standby time for volunteers at the station, but not at the scene. Yes, we can do that. There's a couple ways uh, we can do that, Jim. And as we move on, maybe that question will get answered as I'm describing everything. If it doesn't, just do a quick shout out again, and we'll, we'll get it answered for you. All right, and I forgot him last time, and Mark Vodapich, who is one of our techs, is here today. So you guys are in great hands. So, Mark, I'm glad you're with us today. And, uh, Jim, I promise you I will answer your question as we move forward, and I think part of it may be answered as we go through. All right, close those out. All right, here, so I've enabled all of, the, I've enabled all of these um, to be active within our system for using payroll. And then here is where you add different pay grades. So we've got a lot built in here, but let me show you how you would add one. And it's really straightforward. It's super simple. So in this case, we wanted to put in, say, I'm just I'm not creative today. So we'll just call it a test at $15 an hour. I click save. And now it's going to appear down here in my list. But what it also allows me to do is I can select. It, it, it's really populating drop downs for the different modules where we're going to use the payroll as well as the personnel module. And I need to show you that so you can see, because that's one of the processes here that you don't have to do, but it will be a little bit of a time saver on the back end is in the personnel, uh, in the personnel list in the, in the administration module. So those of you that have permissions for the administration module, I'm going to show you when you're adding people, You have now the ability to, on existing people, or when you add a new person, to assign them pay grades. And that's at the bottom here. And you can assign a default pay grade for when they're doing training. You can have a default one when they're working, which is incidents. You can have a default one when they're on an event. And you can even add a monthly stipend in there, which will also add to your payroll report for that particular person. So here... I would say assign the battalion chief pay for when he's um, training, when he's working, and then maybe it's a different pay grade when he's uh, on an event. And oftentimes it's not so much that it's going to be different um, all the time, but your organization may have that requirement where it's a little bit different depending on what they're doing. So we provide that for you here. So right now I'm in the, I'm in the administration module under personnel list on a particular person where I can then default their training grades. And where this comes into play is when I go to training, this is what's going to pop up. I won't have to select from a dropdown when I'm completing a training event. And this will all make sense as we, as we move forward into that. 
Any questions so far? Double check and make sure. I mean, I probably could just keep going because we've got everybody on the team here to answer questions really well. And and if we got one from Paul and one from Brian, so um, Sarah's going to be working on those. And I promise to get back to, get back to everybody that um, if we need to do some follow up on these questions. Okay, moving forward, back to payroll. All right, so we've got the pay grades all entered. We've got everything enabled that we need to do. So. The one other thing while we're here I want to show you is this bulk update. What this bulk update allows me to do is in one shot for somebody who's I can for working or for training because remember back in back here in the uh, admin module I've got two pay grades that are mandatory training and working. So back here if for some reason I've promoted all my firefighters and they get a new pay grade I can go in and select all my firefighters and We'll just go in and do the first ones that appear here. And I can change their current pay grade to say, I didn't create a new firefighter pay grade yet, but if I did say it's firefighter overtime, I can update them all in one batch instead of going one by one back at the personnel list. So this is a great time saver when pay rates change for multiple people. So then I go down to the bottom of my list, I click update, and then it'll show you look at my firefighters that I checked, it should show their new pay grade. And I did for Tommy, 1575, and up here for Vern. All right, so you could name it, you know, firefighter 2013, 2014, and this allows you to set their new default pay grade multiple people at the same time. It's, it's just a really good time saver. Any questions on the bulk update? I'm going to take a moment to look at the questions that have been currently asked to see if I can answer those. Starting with Yep, Sarah, thank you for answering Paul's question. You can assign a pay grade to anybody um, that you want. Any pay grade to any individual. It doesn't have to be tied to their rank. Those particular pay grades were just created with those titles in front of them. So you can you can Set it as steps. You can set it as even without putting prefixes of titles in front of it. If you have various dollar hourlies, hourly amounts within your organization, whatever you would call it, Paul, you could you could set it as that. Let's see, Brian. What if a volunteer department pays by percent of incidents and training attended? Can they use the payroll module? Yes. Um, what I think you could do, Brian, on that one is just go ahead and, and log everything. Um, that they're doing and then you'd have to pull that there's a report I think you can do percent participated in the different um, events and without jumping to reports I don't want to tell everybody the wrong wrong report you might be able to chime in on that one but one of the things that that uh, they can do is if they need to do it by percent of incidents in training so if, if I understand the question right they're not necessarily getting paid for a hundred percent but say they go to 10 calls and they get paid for 90% of them or 80% of them. What the best solution there I think would be because in our, when you do a training report, it's going to pull the basically hundred percent of their participation is bring it out to Excel and then just create some formulas to, uh, to, um, to calculate it downward. I think that'd be a good way to uh, good way to do it. Uh, Dean, does this cause an issue if they attend training while on duty? Uh, no, I'll, sh I'll show you that, uh, Dean, on that because what it's going to do is you're going to get paid for the training that they attended and then you would have to – the in they get paid for incidents. Now, remember, by the shift, you would want to do a time card for a shift because remember, in the payroll module, you've got time that you can log for training events. You can have time you log for uh, incidents. And then you have for the duration of the incident, and then you have time for events. So if you wanted to log time period for a shift, you would want to do that in the time cards. Um, and I'll, we'll, we'll get to that. There we go. Greg's got a report for everybody. Number 1628, personnel summary of percentage per incident in, and training and events for a date range. So that would be a great start to what Brian was asking earlier. Um, Don, let's see, you've got uh, stipend pay. Can it be used for officer pay? 
Um, I'm not sure if I fully understand the question, but we pay per cause. Do we use points? Uh, uh, Sarah's responded, points would be probably be the best way because then you can tie points per incident. So yes, you could do that. And you could also set it with, have both points and payroll set for that as well. Good questions, everybody. I hope I'm answering them. If it's, the answers aren't clear, just send another quick message and I'll do my best to clear it up or our team will help clear it up. Okay, jumping back out. So we've completed bulk updates, we're good there. All right, now what I wanna show you is, because the setup is fairly simple, I wanna go into an incident and show you how payroll is going to appear in, the, uh, in an incident. All right, I created a report earlier today called Water Evacuation, um, kept it a relatively simple report. In basic four, basic info four is where we add apparatus and, for, and we add personnel. So on this incident, I put in all my incident times. Wait for that to load. I put in all of my incident times. All right, so I've got my whole incident here. So if you have to manually enter it, this is where, of course, where you do it. And if you have a CAD link or CAD interface, the times will automatically populate. I've got my people that were on the scene right here or on the apparatus that responded. So this is all normal incident reporting here. Very straightforward, very simple. Uh, one thing, one tip I wanna make to you um, both for accuracy, especially if you're not having a CAD interface, is some organizations round, the, round their, uh, their minutes, and this, is, this column here in the seconds are always zeros. I would recommend strongly against it because you're going to shortchange yourself when you have a fast response time. So say that you left at 6 minutes and 01 seconds, or 59 seconds, all right, and they got on scene at 6 minutes, 2 seconds, uh, six, 6 minutes and, I'm sorry, 6 a.m. and 2 minutes, it's going to show a full two minute response, but in reality, it was one minute and one, se one second. So if you're not an agency that's using seconds here, you can certainly shortchange yourself. And yeah, it can benefit you when it's the long range and it's going to shorten your time period. But again, for accuracy's sake, and also even here for not so much for payroll, but again, it's, it's one of those tips, tips and tricks that I always like to mention. Um, I'm, I was actually surprised that even our agency back in the day wouldn't, we're not entering seconds. And it's like, no, we've got to enter seconds. All right, so that's basic info four, very straightforward. Uh, we won't, we'll jump right to the payroll page. And this particular page will appear if you have checked those boxes I showed you back at the payroll settings. So I did check enable payroll or enable yeah, payroll and enable points for incidents. That's why this page appears on all my incidents now. And because I selected both of them, it is going to require me to enter both pay and points for that incident. So as I look at it here, I can actually put in at this number, I can put in the, uh, the time for the, the, the call. I rounded up to one hour, but I certainly could put in a fraction of an hour. So I rounded up to one. So it's going to give them one hour if I'm tracking payroll at their default pay grade, which I showed you um, on, on the administration page for the personnel list. So this, these were their default pay grades that I had set for them. And that prevents me from having to toggle through all of our pay grades that are in our system. It's just, again, it makes things just a little bit faster and figure you've got a, many reports to enter, those seconds start adding up. So um, make sure when you see red around anything or a red text, it's required. So if I were to leave any of this blank, it would prompt me at the, uh, let's see if I feel here, it would prompt me at when I go to authorize it, of course, because it's, I, I didn't save it. Let's do that. Always remember right now, guys, on here, if I fill points, if I change anything and I want to stay on that page, click save or click next because these are a little trick here. Save and go next, save and go back. If I went like I did and clicked up here, now you can see it's showing that it's red, which means there's something required that I didn't enter. And if I go to authorize or complete it, it's going to prompt me. But the cool thing is because this is has its own internal QA to prompt the user, all I could have to do is go click on the hyperlink there, the orange text, and it's going to take me right back to where, oh, that's what I need to put in. So I'm going to go ahead and click it, fill it. Now it should be good. And don't do what I did. Click next. And then I'm good to go to review it. Keep in mind, too, that the only time that the payroll, the, the what I just did on the payroll page, will be documented and able, available to you to create a payroll report is if the incident is reviewed so it has to be green locked here not just yellow locked so i'm going to do that so right now i've closed that incident out let's go back 
and it's reviewed, which means because payroll was set for this uh, incident, it is now open and available to me to create a payroll report. And we're going to do that as we, we go through these other, other parts of the system. And take a quick pause, uh, make sure we don't have any more questions that need to be answered. Let's see where we're at. Awesome. Greg and Brian, thanks for those reports. Yep. Sarah, thank you for answering Christopher's uh, question. Time card would work great for an overnight stipend. Uh, base pay, what you do for base pay, if I think I'm reading you right there, Don, um, you could put in there um, their monthly stipend that was in the payroll list. So if they get a base pay, almost like a salary, you could do it back there in the, in the uh, personnel list. And if everybody wouldn't mind me indulging that for just a moment. I'll show you exactly right here monthly stipend. So if it's a set set dollar amount, not necessarily tied to an hour, that would be um, that would be the place to do it. So hopefully that's good. Does that help, uh, Don? And again, anybody else with questions, if they're not if they're not clear, I'll be glad to go back over it. So just let me know. All right, jumping back over. So that's incidents. Very straightforward, very simple, uh, but very effective. And you'll see that when we generate the report. All right, what I'm going to do next is I am going to go into training. This is for a training event. So today I, I created an event um, for an airway lab we did. And let's take a quick peek inside. It's been scheduled. I haven't closed the incident out yet. And this is training 3.0. If you're one of our um, customers that have been around for a little while, you're going to, you may still be on training 2.0. All I, I ask all of you, be patient. We're going to have a series of virtual Thursdays, two or three of them in the next month or so. That's going to go step by step through everything in training 3.0. It is a very, very cool module. The product owner, um, Bob Burton, who is a, was a training officer for Yakima fire. He has been just in the, in the weeds with this, just making it an awesome, awesome module. And, uh, so we'll have a lot to cover. Um, in the next month. So look for those announcements for the training 3.0 uh, virtual Thursdays. But this, I'm going to show you at least just from the, how it integrates with the payroll module right now. So we've created this class and over here in the, where we add people, because again, I checked the box to enable payroll and points for training. It gives me these two columns here, hours and points. Now, you'll notice it's not read and required, so I could leave this blank and not worry about paying anybody for, for payroll. Let me make sure I'm saying the right thing before it is required. Okay, it's not read, but it is required. So I've got one hour for everybody in, in, in for the training, two, one for points. Again, their default pay grades appear here, a little bit of a time saver, and give them their grade, everybody passed. And again, the grade and passing is not related to hours and points. So you just fill in the hours, you fill in the points, and you'll be good to go as far as creating a payroll report. So again, just like an incident, I've got to both complete and review it. Now, just so you know, I get, because I have it full, of, uh, full privileges for this module, I can do it all in one shot by checking this box here. I can set it as complete and reviewed. Some of you may just have the ability to complete it depending on your level of permissions. So if there's ever a discrepancy on what you're seeing on your screen versus mine, chances are on stuff like this, it's going to be a permission setting issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete this class. And I wanna show you a little quirk, especially if those of you that have training 3.0 and it's, it's being worked on, I just completed this class. Went from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., it's done. It still shows as scheduled. Our goal is to get it to show reviewed, but I promise you tomorrow, once the clock strikes midnight, this will turn green and say reviewed. It's a quirk right now in the system. So if you're seeing it, be patient. It, you've done everything right when you've entered your training. You've done nothing nothing wrong in the, in the entry of it. It just takes till midnight to clear that out. Um, and if you've been working in training 3.0, uh, this is probably something you've seen and have wondered why it, why it does that. So it's on its way to be fixed as we as we move all of our customers over to training 3.0. So I just want to give you a heads up on that. Um, imagine we might've had a question on it. So, okay. Questions on training. Question from Mike. How would you use this for on duty training if you did not want the member to be paid uh, for the training because they are already being paid 
uh, for being on shift. Okay, excellent question. Now, what you could do, um, Mike, a couple things here. You could uncheck the box that says um, log payroll, um, enable payroll for training. If the people that are in your organization that do training always do it on shift, or if they're doing something off duty, they don't necessarily get paid for it. I would I would unselect that box and just not have any pay associated with training. And if there isn't the event that they would do some training off duty, then you could uh, simply do a time card form on that. So I think that's a great question. So what Mike's asking is if you have people on shift, say they're on a 24 hour shift and they're going to complete training, but you don't want to, you don't really want to, they're not going to get paid anything differently because they're getting paid to be on shift. I, I think a good solution would be to just not enable pay for training. Um, and then let them let them enter a time card if there's any off-duty training that they would get pay, paid for and that you're logging here within our system. There may be some other solutions. So anybody on the team that can think of another solution, want to uh, type that in and, and we'll put that out there as well. But I think that's one option for you, Mike. Um, if I think of another while we're doing this, I will um, I'll shout it out and, and go from there. But I think that may be our best way to do it. The other one, come to think of it actually, the other possibility, and I'd have to play with this, uh, Mike, but back here, I want to see if it'd let you put in zero. And I don't know if it does, but we could try that and, and play with it. I don't want to take up class time right now, but I will make a note. And if you want to stick around afterwards, we'll play with that a little bit. Um, training. Yeah, that's, that's something I'd like to play with because I think that's a great question. All right. Now we're going to jump back into events because remember, we had uh, we had events. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we have uh, the ability to do events. So what I did was I created an event today called Honor Guard, and whoops, I created an event called Honor Guard, and let me unlock it so you can see how that event is set up. Again, this is a legacy module, um, but it's still very functional. Just looks, the interface, the user interface is slightly different from our newer modules. So today, Honor Guard, Chamber of Commerce, two hours. Then I went ahead and clicked Dave, Tommy, and, and Bob. They're the same crew that went on that incident and the same crew that did that training. So once I've got them, I click Next, go to the next page, fill their hours and points, because I checked both of those boxes. You, um, again, back at the back at the settings page, I selected both hours and points for events. I'm good to go. And now that event is locked. Again, locked events um, have the events have to be locked for it to to be able to be um, added to a payroll report. Uh, Paul, and that's Paul's got a good question. Doesn't the same thing work for incidents? Firefighters get paid for the shift and not for the incident. In that case, you wouldn't want to put in, you would want to uncheck the box also there, Paul, for incidents. It would go for anything that if it's predominantly shift based and you still want to use our payroll module for tracking pay, your best way to do it is through time cards. And that's what I'm going to go to next is doing it via time cards because then you can plug in an entire 24 hour period regardless of what they're doing. So that's, that's for paid departments or combination departments. That's how I, I think would be our best solution. Sarah also has, if you didn't want to, if you did want to be able to enable like points because you're a combination department, you could have a pay grade, a default pay grade of zero. That is another very good option to do. Thank you, Sarah. Forgot about that pay, that ability to do a pay grade of zero. So that is one, another way you could keep it enabled, especially for combination departments where you want to track points and or pay. Um, for response, either off duty or on their time, on their days or um, on call time, just set a pay grade to zero, and it just won't. It won't. won't it'll, you'll be able to put in the one hour, but it'll be times a zero, so it won't add to the dollar value when you do a time card or a uh, payroll report. So, a lot of good solutions. A lot of good solutions there. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, let's go back over to payroll. So. We've got, I'm going to do a, pay, a payroll report here next, but I want to show you time cards. Time cards are yet another way to track time that doesn't necessarily relate to incidents, training, or events, or 
we want, like we talked about with both Mike and Paul, you wanted to just do it by their shift work, um, 24 hour shifts, 48 hour shifts, however it is, and document it that way. So here we've got a time card I created and from date to date, I just did it for today. Um, I can do it um, for multiple uh, dates if I need to, especially for 48 hour shifts. So I selected those three people again. And the reason I'm doing just those three people is when I go to do a report for you, I want to show you how it all ties together on um, these four, four ways to track payroll within our system. So I've selected those people. Then I'm going to click next. I'll put in the hours and points. Again, the default pay grade shows up here. But as Sarah mentioned, um, if there's a default pay grade of zero, you can certainly set it to that. We probably have that in here somewhere. Yep, volunteer zero if you wanted to do that. One other trick uh, tip I wanted to mention to you, and while I'm here I, and I saw it, some organizations, you may have volunteers, but you may want to be able to track and document and then demonstrate to the community leaders or the fire board, the board of commissioners, how much dollar value your volunteers are giving back to the community. So I think kind of a standard rate is around $22. It may vary by community and by state. But you could assign all your volunteers of like a $22 an hour um, pay grade and then run a report on your volunteers and, and show them, hey, we've had a thousand hours of, of uh, contributions during the month from all of our volunteers. And if you put that to a dollar value, you know, you've got $22,000 worth of, um, of labor that's being given back to the community. And it's a way of showing what you're saving and what you're contributing to the community. So you, that's why I saw the, the, the pay equivalent here as a way to track something like that. So it's something to consider um, if that's a, a report or something you'd like to report to your community. And go ahead and click next. Looks good. I've got the two hours. It even adds it up for me here on the time card. So imagine if I had it set for 24 hours. It would give me the ability to do 24 hours and then the total pay for that 24-hour period. That's where time cards come in very, very handy. So that's done. I've got that uh, VIP standby logged in my time card. Again, it could be a shift, it could be a partial shift, however you want to use it in your organization um, where it may not necessarily, the event itself or the time period may not necessarily apply to an incident training. And I know this is kind of an event, but it was something unique, um, more of a standby that I didn't want to necessarily put in my events. Um, the better one is certainly like shift work here. All right, so we'll go back into settings. And now what I want to do here, um, I'm sorry, in the reports, what I want to do is be able to create a new report. Now, this is one thing unique, this button, unlike some of the other modules, this does not take you to a list of reports in our report module like it does in our newer updated modules. Because this is a legacy module, this report takes me to this page only. There are reports related to payroll in the report module, which I'll show you next. But this, this reports, um, these reports are we're actually creating a payroll report. And I believe, and Sarah can, can verify this for me, that we are in the process of being able to um, export this like we can now with the CSV file, but that uh, be kind of like a CAD link, but with payroll companies. So you, it's, like a, it's, a, it's a faster way of getting all of this data that you're entering here to your payroll company, because this really isn't a payroll payroll software where you can add taxes, um, take out taxes and social security and all that. It's meant to track it, but the data here is so good that it would work with payroll, payroll companies. So that's coming down the road. Um, so the new report I want to create, and I, you can do it for like a pay period, but I want to just do it for today so I can show you the things that I entered, how they appear uh, for this particular day. So I'm just going to put in today but remember that the period is not limited to just a day it can be limited to a pay period a week however whatever time frame you find um, valuable to uh, to your agency for tracking all of this so i can do a summary or i can do full i'll do both but let me do the full first and i'm going to track hours this time and that the hours means it's going to track pay so the people on my end that that i in my engine was dave adams tommy batson and Bob Burton. Okay, so that's good. I like that. And I'm going to get report. Here's what my report looks like. And it encompasses everything that I entered today for them. 
So I've got the incident that we did at that water evacuation calls here, the Chamber of Commerce uh, Color Guard event, the time card entered VIP standby, and then the training is right here, the one hour of, of the airway lab we did, all with their pay, and the VIP I gave them overtime on, so you can see that changes, sums it up right here for them. So, so far they got $85 for the day, and then it breaks down by, by pay and, and, and rank. And I wanted to, and imagine this would be a two, you could see this in a two week per person. So it would break it down by every day of that period, what they did, how much they were paid or how many points they were assigned. But in this case, we're concerned with points, the pay grade for that particular event, and then the total amount. All right, this is kind of a, a little snapshot of just a few people. But imagine you've got 20 people in your organization, you're going to have a pretty good report for the pay period if everybody's entering it as um, as you expect them to. Now, you can view reports anytime, um, but once I have named a report, so call this virtual Thursday test, and I put in my password here, once it's saved, that report now cannot be deleted. All right, you can, you can view them without having to lock, to lock them, but once they're locked, they cannot be deleted in, in our system, okay? Questions. I see we've got a few. Let me see if I can help out here. Everybody's jamming on the on the answers. Thank you, Sarah. A lot of good questions. Let me see if there's any. Uh, uh, Tim's asking, uh, we currently use the daily log to track volunteer time. Would it be better to use time cards? It depends on how you're logging the, the volunteer time. If you're if you're basing it on any of those three categories, Tim, like like training, incidents, or events, it might be better to keep it as is. Um, oh, you're using the daily log. Yeah, you know what? I would think time cards would be good because remember in the daily log, unless it's an incident, a training event or event, uh, it's not going to automatically go into your payroll module. Now, I wouldn't stop using the daily log because it pulls so much great data um, for your department. You could always cross check what they enter for a time card with what they did on the daily log. You could certainly do that or... Um, yeah, I think that's, thinking about it, that's probably the best way to, to do it. Um, and I'm not sure, Tim, if you're doing it where on the, the daily log, you're just kind of looking at it and then doing it in another program or in our program. Uh, but you might save time if, if you're doing any of those three things, events, training, or incidents, by simply just activating payroll and, and letting it all log there. And then any extra time that they would be getting paid for anything, you definitely use time cards. So hope that helps. I want to jump back up to one of the earlier questions because if I don't, I will forget it. And that's one thing I don't want to do is, let's see who was asking it up at the top. Jim, so can you track standby time for volunteers at the station but not at the scene? Did, this, did the explanation of the way to do time cards and the other parts of the training module, did that answer your question, Jim? Um, what I can do is if you've got a mic on, I can unmute you. If you don't, then just type in a response for me. And yeah, you don't have a, uh, let me unmute you. And if you don't want to talk or say anything, Mike, no worries. I'm just going to unmute you briefly here and see if that answered your question. Hey, Jim, are you there? Okay. No, Mike, that's no problem. Kind of. Okay. Try and reword it in a way that maybe I can try to do a better job answering it. A um, couple other questions. Let's see. That haven't been answered. Uh, Dean, yep, you're correct. They would see someone complete an incident would see the default pay rates. That is correct. Uh, more complex version of previous question. If we have a firefighter who works 10 days a month at 10 hours per day, one of his shifts, he gets moved to captain. And gets, yeah, you just track it by changing that pay grade for that that uh, that time period that he's um, create a pay. Uh, uh, change that pay grade for the time that he's acting captain. That would be the way to do it. You could create. Yep, Sarah's already answered that. Excellent. Okay, Tim's asking, when using a time card, can you have a report to have a weekly and monthly report for each person? Okay, let's go take a look. That's a good segue here. All right, so when you go to create a report here within the payroll module, you can set it for a time frame and by person. You can do individual people 
well, for hours, points, full or not. The summary report would look like this. Um, it's more of a grid with no, not as many details, and I'm going to show you that, and then we're going to go into another part of the system here. Oops, you got to have a date. Got to have a date. Good thing is this prompts you when you are going too fast and not entering everything that needs to be entered. Okay, so we're just going to do a summary, and this is what this report looks like. This just breaks it down at their rate, at the column headers, are there different, the different rates, how many hours they had in each rate, a total for that particular pay grade, and then a t over here on the far right is a total for that individual. So it looks a little bit different. So the way to do it for a single individual uh, would be to go back, and I'm not going to keep that report. And I would do it by individual. And this is another way you could get them to review it and, and sign their report um, to make sure everything's accurate. So you could do it here by a single individual if you wanted to. Okay, I want to, I'm going to move out into our reports module because there are some additional reports relevant to the payroll module out here in reports that are different from basically a almost like a page kind of like a paycheck stub here a little bit if you did it individual by individual, but certainly the ability to export these out by uh, to Excel allows you to work even more with this data into Excel. And if we, we've got about 10 minutes, so if we've got time, I'll go ahead and export that one I created so I can show you. But let me, uh, let me jump into the reports module here. And we're going to go into payroll. There's not a lot of them, but there are some. So activity for personnel for date range, activity for personnel for date range by hour. So let's take a look at this one. And what the four means is that I can pick a certain person. I'm gonna pick Dave, just one for today, but I can pick groups. I can select different groups and I've created some different ones from previous events. We do it for this month and it's gonna give me this report. And so that's another way to create a report. And again, this is all exportable into Excel. So today, I, again, I did for the month of March, but and we only have one day, but it's showing what the activity was, a description of it, and in this case, the incident is just showing the enforce code for the type, how many hours, what the pay rate was, and how much he was paid. And this is really a kind of a cool report. Again, it kind of dove dovetails with the um, payroll reports within the module itself. It's just laid out a little bit differently, and it's certainly something that can be used to verify both by the employee and the employer on the uh, hours um, that they contributed to the organization during the month. So let me go back. Questions on that report? Let me do another one. Okay, I'm so just kind of scanning over the questions real quick. Give me a moment. I'm going to go back and see another report. And these are your breadcrumbs. So the fastest way when you're when you're working, say you wanted to get more payroll mod, trying to learn the payroll reports, don't go back out to reports. It's a habit I've gotten into over the years. It's a bad one. You follow your breadcrumbs back and go into payroll, and it's going to take you right back to it's going to be a few less clicks that you have to do. So follow those breadcrumbs in the pathway back. And I can see uh, total hours by personnel for date range. Uh, I can pull that report. And I think... This is the, yep, this is the one that our sales team was talking about. So let's take a look at this one for the month of March, all incidents. It's really, really small. So give me a second so you can see that. So I've got all the personnel, the points, the percentage. And this is geared towards, this is definitely clear towards points of the total time that they spent. So that's another report that can be generated. All right, let's jump back over to the payroll module. Any questions on these reports? I just did my habit thing there. So you've got the ability to generate an actual payroll table, payroll report, and then you have these other reports that you can even do by uh, for a single person or persons in one shot, and then um, by their activity, it'll break it down by their activity. And here's the one for signatures. That's the one I wanted to see. 
there are so many reports it is very easy to get lost. So when you see a report that you really like, make it a favorite. Just click here and I, I know I want this one to be one. So we go here, month, create the report. And you take a look at this one and it allows, it's almost like a timesheet. You can print that out at the end of the pay period and have them double check it and make sure everything was entered properly and there's your signature. And that's the one I wanted to show you. Okay, we got five more minutes. What I wanna do, go back out here and here's our virtual Thursday test. Here's what it looks like in a CSV file or comma, separated value file, spreadsheet file. And this is where you can work a little more magic with it. Um, we'll give it a second to load here. So it's that data, but in a way that you can alter it, make additional updates to it, and certainly at, at some point in the near future, some payroll companies will accept this data as an import to their system. Little trick for you when you're working in Excel, little tip, if you, do, if you highlight the entire, click over here in the upper leftmost box to highlight the entire uh, sheet, worksheet, double click on the divider for the columns, it will automatically adjust the column widths for all of them to fit the contents. So see, this is where you can see how this can become pretty valuable for exporting to a payroll company. I just wanted to show you that ability to do that um, within our system. So with that, I am going to take a look at the questions, see if there's anything else I can address that Sarah and the team haven't already answered. And we'll be able to take a few more questions as well. Okay, Paul, which the report, the one that I just did, the CSV or the one with the, the signature line? If you could just type signature line on, on the chat, I'll pull that, I'll go pull that report number up for you. That may, I'm not sure the exact number. Signature line. I'll go to I'll go get that for you. Um, give me just a moment here. And I'll, guys, as always, I stick around later if we need to answer some more questions. So just be patient. I want to get that report number for Paul. Um, not for Paul, for Christopher. And one thing I want to show you, too, on this signature one. And on any report, if you find that you like it and you want to be able to not only add it to your favorites, but just maybe kind of a list of quick, a quick reference list of reports. It's always at the lower right corner of the report. So this particular report is number 1633. So it's 1633. And yep, Christopher, you're very welcome. No problem at all there. All right, let's take a look at these other questions. Anyone outstanding that we haven't answered? Give me a second, I can toggle the questions that haven't been answered yet. If you do a time card, do you see, can you see them in reports? John's asking. Uh, the, the, the time frame, like here, let me show you. Ah, excellent question. Um, the VIP event is not showing here in because the time card is showing is separate. It is only pooling, and that's a key, another key to look at, only closed events, reviewed incidents, and classes. So this would be for those three items only. Anything on the time card is going to be separate. Very astute and good observation there, uh, John. So we always look at the bottom two because at the bottom of every, every one of our reports will summarize where it's pooling that data from for the report. So this particular report does not pool from time cards. All right, looking up at the questions that have not been answered. I think, Dean, did we answer your question about uh, if they do training on duty? I want to make sure we get that answered, that you could set it to a default pay of zero or simply turn it off for training if they're only going to get paid for training while they're on duty. And that's one option there. Okay, I want to make sure we answered that. And Jim, your question was that, did I make it clear enough for the question that you originally had? I know you said kind of there, um, track time by volunteers at the station, but not at the scene. 
that would be you could do it a, you know a couple couple things you could make it an event where they're doing a standby event um, or standby at the station and make it as an event in the events module but not at the scene or you could simply do it as a time card I think you've got a couple options there to do that that would be two ways I would kind of play with it and see what works what works most effectively for you all right. I know we're at the top of the hour. If you've got to go, I completely understand. I just, like I said, I just want to make sure we've got these questions answered. Uh, let's see. Rick asks, we pay different rates for different types of events, such as calls based on the training level. They would. You can always change the pay, um, the uh, the pay grade for any individual, regardless of how, if they're all on the same event and each person may have a different pay grade, uh, Rick, you can change that for events, um, for training and for incidents. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that answers, uh, I'm hoping that answers your question. And I think, I think that covers all the questions that either Sarah uh, was able to answer or I've been able to answer. If I did not clearly answer any of your questions, Please send a, send a, send another question my way. I'll stick around for at least you know five or ten more minutes to make sure they get answered. Um, anything from uh, Mark? Thanks for that. It's report sixteen thirty three. I know we went back to that. Um, Mark, team, anybody else that you'd like to chime in on the payroll module? I know we get quite a few questions on these. Um, by all means, if there is, I'll, I'll unmute your mic and we'll get you to chime in. Same goes for anybody who has a question now at the end here. If you want to simply ask it, just either use the raise your hand button or type in your question. And I'll stop talking for a minute. <laughs> Tim, you're very welcome. Glad you joined us today. It's a, it's a cool module. And once you start playing with it more, it starts, it start everything starts clicking and it's actually kind of fun. Um, it's like I said, it's not a full on payroll program, but it is very useful for tracking a lot of that information you need, especially when you've got to give reports to your uh, either board of directors, uh, town council, city council. It gives you some. It gives you some pretty good tools. All right, as we wrap things up, I want to thank everybody uh, for joining us today. All of our customers, thank you so much for being here. Next week's topic is going to be. Um, occupancy, um, both conducting an inspection and conducting a reinspection. We're going to have uh, one of our other regional trainers join us, Tommy Batson out of uh, North Carolina, and then one of our power users out in Avondale, Arizona, Roger Parker, is going to be um, a guest speaker to tell us, share with us how he uses um, the occupancy module for when events come to Phoenix International Raceway. So it's going to be a good event next week. Uh, I'm looking forward to having you all on board. To, of course, everybody on the ER team, thanks for helping me out today. You guys are fantastic as always uh i couldn't do it without you so everyone have a uh, have a super day be safe out there and i hope to see you next week uh, same time same place last chance for questions i'm going to go ahead and close this out anybody all right dean's got one dean it's really good to see you here and we use a 26 day work period. Can time cards be made for the whole period? Is it just for a particular day or shift? No, you could, you could make it for, and when we do the time card, when you do a multi-day time card, it will break it down by day. So go ahead and set it for your 26 day period. And then you can make entries for each of the days within that 26, uh, 26 day work period. Because I was kind of going fast and simple today, I only made it for one day. But if I were to do it for multiple days, and since you're still with me, Dean, I'm going to do it real quick so I can show you what that looks like. Okay, so if I want to create a new payroll report, say we've got, just for an example, I just want it to go to the 26th of March. Say that's our period. We're going to go, we're going to go full hours and we check everybody. So it's going to be a big report. I'm going to go ahead and get that report, and then it's going to pull everybody that was in that period into that report. All right, and in the time card, same back in the time card, I, I'm going to add a time card for say March, and we're going to go with March third. Okay, and check everybody. So now, what will happen? 
is it's going to create that entire 26 day period. And because it's a lot of data here, it's going to take a second to load. So bear with me. It's really big. Hopefully I won't crash anything, but it is a way to do it. All right, let's go first. There it did it. All right. This is going to be a lot. We're going to tax the system today. No, not really. It's just because it's so much to load on a single page, that's why it's taking so long. Maybe Tom just needs to be smarter. Let's do this. I'm just going to check a handful of people. So at least you'll get the gist of it. And you could do this by, you could even select just the personnel on a particular shift for that time period. Okay, let's make it a little faster. And and Dean and Mike, this would this would apply to you as well, Mike. See how it goes by day? I can assign different hours for each of that day during that 26-day period. You can see why it would take forever to load for everybody in the department for that 26-day period. But you could do this for just by shift by shift, station by station, however you'd like to break it down. And then go ahead and, and select how many hours, what pay grade for each of those days when you're creating this time card. So this is one way to do it. Hope that helps, guys. All right, I'm out of here. Have a uh, have a great day everybody. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.